Catatonia is an abnormal mental state characterized by changes in consciousness and behavior where the patient acts in a way that appears senseless or purposeless to an outside observer. More than just being a general state of purposeless behavior, people in a state of catatonia act in very specific ways that can help you to recognize when the state is occurring. Use the mnemonic LIMP MEN to remember these core features of catatonia. First, L is for lethargy. The lethargic stupor that is characteristic of catatonia involves an apparent lack of mental activity. Patients with catatonia often appear sedated or even comatose despite being awake with their eyes open. Next, I is for immobility. The stupor scene in catatonia can extend from mental lethargy to a state of physical immobility, manifesting in a complete lack of movement. If left untreated, immobility can have potentially severe consequences, including malnutrition, dehydration, and muscle breakdown. Next, M is for mutism. Catatonia often renders patients mute, resulting in minimal or even entirely absent verbal communication. Next, P is for positioning. Catatonia involves various abnormalities of positioning. Catalepsy is a state of severe muscular rigidity resulting in difficulty changing position. This can lead to posturing or the maintenance of odd or uncomfortable seeming position, sometimes for even hours on end. A patient with catatonia may even allow someone else to move them into different positions and then continue to hold these positions against gravity, a phenomenon known as waxy flexibility. Positioning abnormalities are some of the most characteristic signs of this condition and are often a major clue to diagnosis, although they are not present in every case. Next, M is for motor abnormalities. While most of the signs in catatonia involve decreased activity due to mental lethargy and physical immobility, people in a state of catatonia can show increases in specific behaviors as well. Grimacing involves the patient making various facial expressions or holding them for prolonged periods of time. Patients may also engage in mannerisms which are odd-appearing caricatures of normal actions such as waving their hands back and forth repeatedly. Stereotypy involves frequent, repetitive, and purposeless movements such as attempting to walk into a wall over and over again. Finally, catatonia can, at times, lead to agitation involving restlessness and impulsivity, which can be dangerous and requires immediate clinical attention. Next, the E is for echolalia and echopraxia. The echoes in catatonia involve mimicry of people around the patient. This can manifest as either echolalia, or repeating specific words and phrases over and over, and or echopraxia, or mimicking the movements of others in a reflexive or purposeless way. Like positioning, echolalia and echopraxia are highly specific signs of catatonia, but they are not present in every case. Finally, N is for negativism. Negativism involves a complete lack of response to any external stimuli, such as being greeted or given instructions. Negativism can even extend to situations where most people would react involuntarily, like a patient who stands motionless even when a ball is thrown at their face by accident. Unlike delirium, which has an underlying medical cause, catatonia is related to an underlying psychiatric condition in most cases. Catatonia most often occurs with mood disorders, with over half of cases being related to bipolar disorder and an additional third being related to depression. However, it can be seen in schizophrenia as well, with up to 15% of cases being associated with psychosis. In the modern day, catatonia appears to be rarer than it once was. This is thought to be related to the availability of treatment which prevents these disorders from regressing to the point where catatonia develops. Nevertheless, studies suggest that around 2% of all severely ill psychiatric patients do show signs of catatonia, so it must still be taken very seriously. Men and women appear to be affected at equal rates. Catatonia can affect people of all ages, with catatonic patients as young as 5 and as old as 90 having been reported in medical literature. The prognosis for untreated catatonia is generally poor, and less than half of all patients will recover without treatment. It goes without saying that someone who is unable to engage in organized and purposeful activity will have difficulty maintaining the usual activities of life, and most patients with catatonia will end up hospitalized. The core signs and symptoms of catatonia can themselves lead to injury, such as prolonged immobility increasing the risk of clotting and leading to outcomes like deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary emboli. A particularly severe form of catatonia, known as malignant catatonia, involves not only the core features of catatonia, but also significant autonomic nervous system instability, including sweating, fever, and changes in blood pressure, heart rate, and respiration. The presence of autonomic instability in a patient with catatonia is ominous, 
as over half of all patients with malignant catatonia will die without treatment, and even with treatment, the mortality rate can be up to 10%. For this reason, assessment of vital signs for patients with signs of catatonia is of utmost importance. Luckily, catatonia is a treatable condition in the majority of cases. You can remember the core treatment strategies by using the acronym BED. First, benzodiazepines are the mainstay of treatment and are effective up to 80% of the time. Benzos will often produce dramatic improvements in behavior and cognition within minutes of administration, which can be helpful not only therapeutically for the patient, but also diagnostically for the team by confirming suspected cases. Of note, catatonia often requires benzos to be used at much higher doses than they typically are, so don't be afraid to push the dose if you suspect catatonia. In cases of treatment refractory catatonia where benzos have not worked, electroconvulsive therapy or ECT should be considered, as it has a response rate of 85 or even 100%, even in cases that have not responded to treatment so far. ECT is truly the gold standard for catatonia, though given its more invasive nature, benzos should always be tried first. Finally, you should remember to look at the patient's medication list and discontinue any antipsychotics. While these medications are often used to treat the underlying disorders leading to catatonia, once catatonia has developed, they should be stopped, as they tend to not only worsen catatonia itself, but are associated with a higher rate of potentially severe side effects such as neuroleptic malignant syndrome in patients with catatonia. By considering all of these steps, you are doing what you can to put the cat to bed. Out of all the conditions seen in psychiatry, catatonia is one of the most terrifying, as it not only robs a patient of their usual personality, but also puts them at risk of significant disability or even death. However, catatonia is also one of the most treatable conditions in this field, with a profound gap in prognosis between treated and untreated cases. While catatonia does not receive as much attention as it once did, make sure to keep it on your radar, especially if you work in settings with severely ill patients. And that's it. Thanks for watching this video. To learn more about the disorders that lead to catatonia, you can pick up my book, Memorable Psychiatry on Amazon, or subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. In the meantime, I hope you stay well.